I do is I work with this particular uh, acupuncture protocol, which is called NADA. So it's N-A-D-A, -A, and the N and the A and the D and the A stand for National Association of Detox Acupuncturists. And the protocol involves uh, putting in uh, acupuncture needles in the ear, which is called in the vernacular auricular acupuncture. And this particular protocol is very simple. It's five needles, and the five needles strike five points. And those needles going into those five points help people to get off of drugs because they help with cravings and addictions, but they also really help people relax and get more comfortable. And they do what's called community acupuncture, meaning that rather than an individual in a private room, it's everybody together in one large room where they're receiving these ear needles together. So the whole atmosphere becomes what I've tended to call a therapeutic community. And it's going to help everybody because I realized that just sitting down and being together with people was already very relaxing. I was already breathing and kind of feeling how it was just wonderful to be together with other people who shared their own problems. And that whatever acupuncture treatment I would give people, I would start very simply. And in that simple way of starting, I would find my way through to how much I could really help people with different acupuncture forms. And my father, as you know, uh, was trained to do acupuncture. And so then I, I started looking into acupuncture as a possible outlet to connect with my patients in that way. And then I would say that more and more as um, chronic disease becomes a very serious thing for our, our community, our patients, that the traditional here's a pill and you're cured model is no longer working. And so we are starting to see the benefits of massage and acupuncture scientifically proven. And so with all of those things kind of coming together at the right time, I made the decision that this is something I wanted to explore and then be trained to do. There's no one right or wrong way to experience an acupuncture treatment. Hopefully what it does is it helps you into your own experience mm -hmm. to feel what you're feeling, which you know is different for everybody depending on what you know it is that occurs for them during the experience. One of the things I like to say is that acupuncture is one of the few treatment modalities, forms, that's a mind-body, body-mind treatment. It doesn't distinguish between, now I'm going to take care of Nathaniel's mind, now I'm going to take care of Nathaniel's body. The needle I heard described as like the hyphen or the connector between psyche and soma, or mind and body. It's simply the bridge that puts you more into alignment between your mind and your body, and your body and your mind. I once gave a talk on a radio program. A friend of mine, a psychiatrist, asked me to come and talk about chi. And if acupuncture does anything at all, it works with the energy of the body, which in Chinese terms is called qi, or energy. And so I called a friend and I asked, if you were going to be talking on the radio, what would you say about qi? Because I was unclear what really to say to my other friend who I'd be talking with on the radio. And he said, really, it's simple. Anything that you experience is qi. So he said, the simplest way to say it is that what you're seeing right now, what you're hearing right now, what you're feeling right now, what you could taste or touch or know right now in your brain or in your mind, however you say for yourself, this is my experience, that's all energy. And so in some ways, in acupuncture terms, the needle doesn't care what differentiation you make for yourself about those different levels of your experience. It's going to take care of all of those things synchronously, simultaneously, connectedly, so that what is hoped at the end of the treatment is that whatever is blocked in your system, which could be gastrointestinal, so you have some sort of a, just an uncomfortable feeling in your gut um, because you've got some kind of a gut condition and you've got nausea or you've got some kind of a discomfort in your stomach, or as you were describing, your anxiety because there's things going on in your working life or your personal life, or in that same kind of level of uh, the anxiety, kind of something about your mood, depression, or headaches or anything, the acupuncture is going to be treating all those things simultaneously. So it's really an elegant form. One of the ways that I heard acupuncture best described when I was learning my form at UCLA was a very beautiful acupuncturist from Spain. And when he was asked, what does the acupuncture do? He said, well, the acupuncture is placed into an acupuncture point, which is an acupuncture point along a particular meridian or channel. 
and there's 12 meridians or channels that run circumferentially around the body. There's six on one side and there's six on the other side. And then there's say 365 points like the days of the year. And you can put needles in any one of those points. And the idea is that when energy is blocked, it creates a certain experience of pain or anxiety or depression or nausea or any kind of psychosomatic symptom that you could reference as a geriatrician. So he said that those points are a little bit like the doorway to your home. He said, it's not as though you don't know where the doorway to your home is. And it's not as though you don't know that that doorway to your home, that acupuncture points, connects to the hallway that leads into the living room, that leads into the kitchen, that leads up the stairs to the bedrooms and looks out into the countryside. Each of those points through those meridians is connecting to your liver or to your spleen or to your brain or to anything that's going on in your body. And what the acupuncture point does is it allows the acupuncturist to release the block in those channels that's creating the disturbance, which is your anxiety or gut health or lack therein, and it helps your system to come into alignment and balance. This particular work that we're gonna to do today, the NADA protocol, involves five points, and I'm gonna explain those points to you as I'm putting them in. I'm going to be putting in the needles now for the NADA protocol with the one additional needle being this needle here on the crown of the head, which is called Governor Vessel 20 or Dumo 20, which is a confluence of many different acupuncture meridians and points, which is again very helpful in relaxing. In Western medical terms, we might say it's a point that actually has endorphins mm -hmm. or neuropeptides that are related to it that of course are going to produce that sort of euphoric feeling. This first point here in the ear is called sympathetic or parasympathetic and it's related to the autonomic nervous system. Again, helpful, you might say, regulating mm. and down-regulating because it's really parasympathetic, not sympathetic that it's actually connecting with. So parasympathetic being the down-regulating part of the autonomic nervous system. This point here, take a nice breath, is called Shen Men, which means spirit gate, and it's associated with the heart. And the heart in Chinese medicine is associated with joy. So again, one might imagine that the heart is related to circulation of blood, and that the qi and the energy circulates along with the blood. So again, promoting circulation where there's stasis, or removing blocks where there's blocks. This next point is for the kidney. The kidney in Chinese medicine in some ways is associated with energy. It's sort of like the gasoline tank of the body. It's where a lot of our energy reserves are stored. And the kidney in particular, when it's upset, creates anxiety. And because you referenced the anxiety that you were experiencing earlier, that particular point would be particular to you because it should help to release the pent-up emotional energy, the pent-up psychic energy, just the difficulties that one perceives in their lives that's creating that feeling of anxiousness. This next point is for the liver. The liver in Western medicine, as in Chinese medicine, is related to detoxification. So again, in terms of what's wrong inside of a person when they have a condition, whether it's in Western medicine or Chinese medicine, there's stuff going on inside which creates toxic residue. And that toxic residue needs to be dealt with in some fashion, either excreted or metabolized, or in some ways worked through. And so that particular point for the liver is important in helping to work with the emotion of the liver, which is mm. anger, or preceding anger or frustration. Mm. So there's a liver point. This next point is for the lung. And the lung, of course, if you take a nice breath, is what gives us oxygen. But also, the lung, when you're really focusing into your conscious breathing, and you were talking earlier about consciously breathing, doing meditation, or mindfulness, now in the neurosciences, people are discovering that with mindfulness comes health benefits. And of course, one of the main focuses of mindfulness is on the breathing. 
So to work with the lung and to work with the breathing, to work through mindfulness, is going to help the mind and the body, the body and the mind. And the seat of grief in the body is considered the lungs. Mm. So oftentimes when a person is experiencing profound sadness and grief, the lung will be used in terms of being able to rebalance or calibrate that particular organ. Mm. The last four points I'm going to put in are what are called the four gates. There's two points in the hands. There's one that's called large intestine four, which is this point here between the thumb and the index finger. The last two gates are related to the liver meridian, liver three between the big toe and the second toe. And that's the treatment that we're going to give you for the day. Uh, and then take another nice breath. Hmm, then one more time just for reinforcement. Lovely. And I hope out of the, all of the things that we've shared together today that the one thing that comes back most importantly is your breathing because, just a moment, when I get these needles out of your ear and the two in your hands and the two in your feet, I'm gonna have you describe your experience briefly for me, but I want you to kind of think about, it. this is your experience, which you're describing, and as you're breathing, I think the simplest way to say it is, this is, again, your breathing experience. So when things get tense out there in the working world and things get tense out there in the financial world, and Things get tense out there because they get tense out there. When you breathe into your body, into your experience, what do you think? Does the body like this experience? It does. Does the yeah. mind like this experience? It was wonderful. It's not only right here, it's everywhere you ever go.